Welcome to the most important aspect of filmmaking, which is unboxing. If you've unboxed anything from Blackmagic before, this will be completely familiar, but there are a couple things that I want to note. So unfortunately, I only have the EF mount here, but the cool thing is that Blackmagic is shipping the Broadcast G2 with an EF mount and a B4 mount that you can interchange yourself. Right out of the box, you have everything you need besides a lens, a battery, and some recording media. We have the top handle that the viewfinder can slip into with this little plate. We have the AC power. We even have the, uh, the shoulder pad with 15 millimeter holes here. And then of course we have the Ursa itself. So I really, really love the body of the Broadcast G2. It's fully magnesium alloy. It's like five pounds without the battery and the lens. And I love the design of it. It's really comfortable. I love the weight. It all that surrounds its 6K Super 35 sensor. It is very similar, if not the same sensor as the Pocket 6K, which is a great thing because that's a widely adopted and widely loved sensor. It's a great sensor. That means that we're getting dual native ISOs at 400 and 3200 in case you need to shoot in less than ideal lighting situations. There's also two full-size XLRs with phantom power running out of each and all the controls are really easy to find and really easy to use. I also love how Blackmagic lets you switch out the lens mounts if you want. You can do EF, F, PL, and B4 for broadcast work, which is really cool. Another thing that I love about this camera is the selection of codecs. There's Blackmagic RAW, which is an amazing RAW codec. The image is great, it edits super smoothly, and there's an entire range of compressions that you can use for your different needs. If you don't wanna shoot RAW, you can shoot ProRes. There's HQ and 422 uh, with different resolutions. But what's new with the Broadcast G2 is H.264 and H.265 recording. If you're doing longer takes, you want a little bit more of a compressed file, you can do that now. Everything records to the familiar card slots that we're used to with the Ursas. There's 2C fast and 2SD, but what they've added now is a USB-C port on the back so that you can record directly to SSDs. All these features are really great and they make shooting way easier, but I think the best thing that the Broadcast G2 has going for it is the image quality itself. The 6K sensor gives you plenty of resolution to work with, but it's not clinical, it's not over sharpened, you won't paper cut your eyeballs on this image, it just looks so good and so detailed. I know this is subjective, of course, and this opinion is going to vary between cinematographers, but I have always loved and I continue to love Blackmagic's color science. I think it looks really organic and natural, I love skin tones, I love... Uh, tone transitions and 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 roll off and and everything you could ever want it just it, you just get a good image out of this camera i even love the noise pattern you can shoot in low light even over crank this camera and let a little bit of noise in for some texture and the noise is finely dispersed it looks really filmic it looks granular it doesn't look super digital or weird rolling shutter performance on this camera is fine as long as you're not whip panning with a 70 to 200 or something. I usually shoot in the cropped 6K mode because it seems to help with the rolling shutter a little bit, but it's really not that much of an issue at all. I don't have a Xyla 21 to shoot any in-house testing or anything like that. But if we assume the sensor is really similar to the Pocket 6K, then we can reference Cine D's findings whenever they tested the Pocket 6K for dynamic range on their Xyla 21, and we can probably get a pretty good idea. I'm usually looking at signal noise ratio of two so I can see how many stops I can get without too much noise. And on this camera, it looks to be about 12 stops. And this is plenty for whatever you're doing. And I love that about this camera. Between the codex and the actual video quality itself, there's really nothing that you can't shoot. You don't have to put limitations on your camera and say no to certain shots. When you show up on set, you know in the back of your mind that 
you will be able to handle anything that the day throws at you, which is priceless. I love the design and the weight and the balance. If you throw on any standard lens or standard zoom, the, the weight will level out all those micro jitters and you're left with just fluid, well-weighted, handheld work, which makes it great for documentary work between the ND filters and the dual native ISOs and the weight, it's a perfect documentary camera or for live work, it's just excellent at basically everything. And one of the biggest parts of that is just its simplicity. And I, I hate using a camera with loose brackets and bolts and cords and everything running all over the place. And one of my favorite things about the Ursas are that everything's just all inclusive. You just throw a battery on it and it's rock solid. You put a lens on it and it's rock solid. There's no cords running all over the place. You just have a dense, usable, balanced metal body. And when you run out of juice from the camera, you just pop the battery off and put a new one on. You don't have to worry about running a bunch of extra cords and everything. You can if you want, you can build up this camera for huge productions or just small ones and you can just handheld it and it's already weighted perfectly. And I think that's invaluable and I love that about the Broadcast G2. Another great thing when you're out on the field is how easy it is to operate. There's basically the best operating system in the industry if you ask me it's so easy to use the options the settings are really easy to go through if it's your first time operating a black magic camera you can basically immediately figure out how to find anything that you want and the main shooting screen has easy access to anything you want false color guidelines peaking zebras anything like that and there's dedicated buttons all over the body for any other functions that you might need it's just really great for even bad weather conditions. If you're out and it's cold and your hands are going numb and you want to turn peaking on, there's a button for it. Or the ND filters, there's a knob that you turn. It's just really great to have a solid, easy to use camera system for any situation that you're in. I've used Ursus for years, like hundreds of hours of shooting and I've never had one die even one time. And this camera is no different. I had it in wild weather conditions, super low temperatures, moisture, uh, you name it. And it just keeps going. It's built like a tank. This camera can fit into almost any production setting too with the selection of IO. There's SDI coming out of the front and the back. There's an SDI input. There's BNC timecode. And Blackmagic has added an RTMP encoder in this camera, which is huge. Another big advantage you get with this camera if you're an indie filmmaker or a freelance videographer is perception. And what I mean by that is if a client hires you to come and shoot something and you show up with a, a big professional metal cinema body, they're going to have a lot of confidence in you as a cinematographer versus if you show up with a tiny mirrorless camera. And whether you kill the project or not, uh, client confidence is a real thing and it kind of sucks i hate that that's the case the ursa looks like it means business which doesn't hurt and we haven't even touched on all the broadcast capabilities of this camera which is what it's designed for you can use all your old black magic fiber backs and just plug your servos in make sure the b4 mounts on there and you're totally good you're getting new resolution options you're getting new codec options and i think the biggest thing is the new low light sensitivity there's a lot of productions that don't have enough light to feed most broadcast sensors and this isn't one of them. You can just crank the ISO up and you're not even going to see any noise on iMag or on streams. You're just getting a clean, great image right out of the gate. We're talking a excellent broadcast system that could be ripped off the sticks and you can install your EF mount or your F mount or your PL mount and you have a super capable cinema camera. And plus, right out of the box, you're getting the shoulder pad, you're getting the top handle, you're getting the V-mount plate pre-installed, and it's $4,200. And I mean, there's mirrorless cameras that don't even have full-size HDMI that are more expensive than that. I think this camera is really easy to recommend because it can basically do everything. It really is like three cameras built into one. For that reason, I would just recommend looking into it if you're looking for an upgrade for your broadcast system or you're looking to buy your first professional cinema camera.